Starlink Internet moves to Tucson. Thousands of patients' record, uh, records appear on the dark web. Cryptocurrency, past, present, and future. And the biggest cyber attack in computer history ever. All that and more next on The Computer Doctor Show. You're listening to The Computer Doctor Show. Your source for technology subjects affecting your business and personal life during this new normal. Your host is an award-winning office technician and IT specialist, author, tutor, ethical hacker, and recent winner on localbest.com as the best computer shop in Tucson. Broadcasting live, here's Aaron Moss. Hello, Tucson. Welcome to the Computer Doctor Show, episode 33. I'm Aaron Moss, your host. Good to have you with us every Saturday at 2 p.m. right here on KVY 1030 The Voice. We post all of our shows and bonus content on ComputerDoctorShow.com. Again, ComputerShow.com. Our open lines, 520-790-2040. We'll feel, feel free to call in any time with your comments and questions on our show today. Uh, cryptocurrency is not going away. There are people that still know nothing about it and people that live and breathe crypto. Uh, we have two crypto users on the show that may sway your decision to buy or to not to buy crypto on our crypto past, present, and future segment. But first, our top tech news stories this week. Tucson residents uh, may have started getting emails about uh, Starlink's move to Tucson. Starlink will be deploying its satellite internet service by mid to late 2021 in the old Pueblo and surrounding areas. But applications are starting now. Uh, on our December 26th and January 2nd shows, we interviewed Leanne Smith in Montana for a sneak peek of what you can expect with this low-orbit internet system. Expect to pay $500 or less to get started and $99 per month or less after that. Expect uh, speeds such as 150 to 174 megabit download, 13 megabit upload speed with 41 to 74 milliseconds latency. Now these are amazing stats for those that only have access to dial-up or DSL currently or access to no broadband at all. Starlink has not said anything about data limit caps uh, to get on the list for Starlink internet service by SpaceX and Elon Musk uh, uh, project. Go to their official website at starlink.com. The world's largest cyber attack in history is what they are calling the breach uh, that happened to solar winds in December of 2020. The Microsoft-based system is uh, used by many governments and hospitals, and after the dust settled, some 18,000 organizations were affected. From court documents to nuclear codes, experts report that the hack was extremely complicated and involved over 1,000 engineers to make it happen. The attack started in hacking updates before they deployed. China and Russia are being blamed and both have denied. Uh, governments uh, didn't detect the compromise because it happened on private networks. Experts say that the only way to ensure the hack is to, uh, to, to completely break down the entire infrastructure and rebuild a completely new infrastructure to ensure that no remnants of the hack still exists. And a further pro privacy policy for us may mean more now than ever before. Since any system can be compromised, it makes you kind of want to go back to paper. If your credit score is low, good for you. Tens of thousands of patient records were uploaded to the dark web for purchase. Healthcare IT News reports the files included patient names, addresses, birthdays, uh, contact information, uh, uh, secu uh, social security numbers, financial information, Medicaid numbers, prescription information, and their medical diagnosis. Dark web buyers are willing to pay upwards of $1,000 per record, and hackers know this, which is why, which is what drives the, that black market product. The compromised patient records has not compromised the care they receive. Some medical systems have already sent notifications to patients in their network that may have been affected. Not much that can be done from the patient side to prevent this from happening in the future other than turning to local medicine or doctor's offices not collected that are not connected with large networks or alternative cares. So uh, this brings us to our first segment. Uh, uh, cryptocurrency is doesn't seem to be going away, and there are people that still know nothing about it. And there are people that live and breathe crypto. A big name such as PayPal, MasterCard, and USAA are gearing up for a crypto future. The question is, should you? 
should you start using cryptocurrency is the question. On the phone with us, we have two guests. Um, first off, we have Robin Hill. He is he owns an art gallery and music studio in Michigan. He's also a videographer, photographer, and aspiring philanthropist. Are you there, Robin? Yeah, how's it going? Yeah. <laughs> okay, how's good. Going? Very good. Thanks for being with us. We also have Tanner Payne. Uh, he is the host of Pain to Success podcast and the world of pain. Are you there, Tanner? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, guys, for uh, coming in um, on a Saturday. Uh, I know you guys are very, very busy. But um, here's the first question. Maybe I can uh, uh, open this up to maybe Robin first. Uh, what are some of the advantages of using cryptocurrency in your experience? Um, honestly, I, I use it a little bit different than a lot of, like, the, uh, the serious guys do it. You know, I'm, I'm more so – I used to do stocks when I was younger – and this is kind of like another game, you know, sort of say. And then, like, it had, like, its advantages with buying things that you want to do off the market or, you know, kind of like secretively buying stuff. That's kind of where it originated at, so to say. But what I got from it um, was my buddies had put me onto it, and they were, like, super early on the mining stages of that, you know. And um, I was I got involved, and I trusted what they said, and it just ended up going skyrocketing for me. And, like, ever since then, I just kind of stayed in it. And I always tell people, you know, get in there if you if you want to have extra money. But like, it's a roller coaster. It's not like the stock market, so to say. It's a different kind of game to me, mm-hmm. for how I use it. Okay. So it's it's an advantage if you have money to play around with. But it's it's something that I hate to see people on Facebook always just like, oh, buy, 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 and it's like, what are you telling me? You're just telling people to get involved in something without giving them too much information behind it. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a it's a on and off game with me where I, I advise it to somebody, but I advise it to the right people, so to say. And your your response, Tanner, uh, some of the advantages of cryptocurrency for you? So I'm kind of along the lines of I, when I saw it the first time, I didn't really have much information on it. Actually, I saw it the very first time when the Bitcoin, one whole Bitcoin was only worth about $170. Mm-hmm. And the biggest regret in my life is not getting in at that price point because it's now crossed the $57,000 mark. And mm-hmm. I started buying in at 35000 so I've already made a little bit of on the investment. But I would have to say to someone who doesn't know really anything about it, you have to do your own research mm-hmm. because you – you can sit here and listen to all these gurus all day or people who are looking at it all day and you're never actually going to be able to retain the information or really look at it in depth until you do your own research. Okay. I so, agree. so both, both of you are kind of, uh, you, your, your responses were the same. So, uh, do the research. So how would one actually, uh, what, what, what have you found of some uh, good resources for doing uh, cryptocurrency research? Rob, you can go first. Um, I uh, I would say if I, you got to sort out the right people. Get on Reddit. You know, everybody's talking about Reddit. You just got to find a group of people where you can just stick with those guys. And, like, you know, don't bounce around. And It's not bad to get a bunch of information from everybody because more information the better. But, again, you have to know how to do your own research. And, like, if you know about stocks and how to research stocks a little bit and, like, what companies are doing, what companies are accepting what, you kind of know how to read how the market's going to kind of play out although you're never going to be 100% right all the time. But it's, it's just about once you, once you get involved in research and you do a couple of things by getting around the right people, everything kind of comes together after, at that point. It's still a game, still a gambling game, but you, the more knowledge you have, the better. It's like some people go to the casino and they play slot machine, and some people go play blackjack. You know, <laughs> the numbers are a lot better in blackjack than they are with the slot machine. So, and, but, you know, it, 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 is, it is a gamble, uh, no, no, matter, yeah. no matter how much uh, research you do. Uh, and right. and uh, so so your answer was uh, uh, researching with uh, Reddit groups and other social media groups. Kind of choose a group and kind of stick with them, but also stick be them, a, yeah. But also kind of uh, have your feelers out there for other sources of information at any given time. One hundred percent. Okay. And um, let me see. That was Tanner. Uh, Robin, your your response. No, that was that that was me, Robin. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, Tanner. <laughs> my bad. My bad. All right, Tanner. Your response. Um, I would have to say, find a person who you know is very knowledgeable in investment in the investment field, and try to get as much information about cryptocurrencies and 
see if they're even buying. Because if they're not buying and there's someone you trust, more than likely you're not going to trust the investment itself. Mm-hmm. Right. And I would also, I'd also go as far as look up maybe some more technology, like go to some technology forms because they're going to be very well versed in the mining part of it. They're going to know how the mining works, what Bitcoin is, mm-hmm. and just kind of find out the very basic knowledge of it and kind of expand from there. I could, yeah. I understand the Reddit thing, but a lot of, a lot of Reddit gets hype right now because of the Wall Street bets. Mm-hmm. You don't want to just jump right into Reddit and then you lose out on like the very basic like structures because they're some Reddit people are going to go very in depth and they might not know that you don't know anything about the very basic parts of Bitcoin. Sure. Right, right. Okay, so um, is buying crypto a good investment? Uh, so, so it, it's uh, uh, based on your responses so far, it sounds like it could be a little bit yay, a little bit nay, uh, but it kind of depends on the, uh, the basis of the research. So it's more like a timing thing. Um, is uh, if someone were to say start doing research now, let's say that there's a listener that's uh, maybe looking to do some uh, research right now about crypto. Um, uh, we already discussed what some of their uh, what some of their options would be uh, to actually do that research, uh, but uh, how much research really is necessary? Like uh, just until they feel comfortable, or should they start small? Uh, because it looks like a lot of these. Uh, uh, looks like a lot of these uh, coins that are out there, uh, they 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 start small, but then they skyrocket. So, is there ha- have you seen anything like that where you buy low, sell high on like these new new crypto coins that are coming out? I personally, I don't, I haven't really dug into do- Dogecoin and all that kind of stuff right now. I've seen it. I'm more just in the Bitcoin. Okay. Um, and I think that you could, as a small-time person, you want to play around a couple dollars, you know, and you you, you want to see what you can do with 5 to $10. Like, you know, that those kind of small investments, they're not going to make you think that you can go higher with it. I always tell people, if you're going to get into this game, just drop at least $1,000, you know, especially if you drop 1000 on the on the Bitcoin. Say things, you can always sell out anytime you want with Bitcoin. Like, versus Wall Street, you have to wait till next, like the next day when the, the streets open up. So it's like with Bitcoin... You can drop a thousand dollars in there, and people are scared at that point. But you know, you gotta be scared in this game sometimes. But if, if it does go down, sure, you lost eight or two hundred bucks or something like that. Just rip it right out. Pay attention. Mm-hmm. You have to like, you have to get it involved to where actually you feel it. Because ten dollars, you're not gonna feel it when you go up a little bit and go down a little bit. That's how I think. You know. Um, so, so what, you're recommending that uh, you you have skin in the game, and uh, <laughs> is it the yeah. so if if you have enough money in it, you'll you'll take it seriously. You're going to take it serious. It's, that's exactly how it is. You see, the, I watch the people who talk about, oh, I put $10 in. And then I watch the guys who are at the same level as them who say they put $1,000 in. And then you just watch them over time. You'll see who's starting to take things serious. And it's always the people who took the big leap who are going to start taking it serious. They're going to see a bigger number return. But not to say playing with those small coins like Dogecoin, you could put $10 in and all of a sudden walk with $500. Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, but it, I think that, to me, to get into those small coins, I would get into a big coin first and then go to the small coins once I understand everything. That's how I would think. Hmm. I want you guys to uh, stay on the line. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to discuss which currency is best and why. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, are up uh, that's what we're going to talk about next after the break our open lines five two zero seven nine zero twenty forty for your questions on that interview. But. Uh, since we already have two people on the line, uh, I might have my uh, my friend Tom uh, take those questions and type them out for me on the screen here, if that's necessary. You're listening to The Computer Doctor Show, KBY 1030 Tucson. We'll be right back after this quick break. Solar is popping up all over town. Why? Because solar just makes sense. Say goodbye to expensive summer electricity bills. Call or text Julie Festerling at Icon Power, 520-307-1013. Avoid the new 7.9% price increase with the utility company. Call Julie at 520-307-1013. Icon Power will help you take control of your electric bill. 
Perfect Look Photography is a photography business that serves individuals, families, wedding parties, children's parties, quinceaneras, and family reunions. We also do headshots for actors and model portfolios. We photograph all types of events in Tucson and communities in Pima and Santa Cruz counties. In addition, we provide more types of photos than any photographer in Tucson, including green screen, art photography, montages, and DVD slideshows. We provide great photos at great prices. For more information or to get a quote, please call 499-4209. Ugly Goose Car Rental is new in Tucson, providing a low-cost auto rental alternative for just $100 per week. The only catch? The cars are ugly, but very safe and reliable to get you to work, school, shopping, and all your important appointments. To reserve your $100 a week car rental, call Ugly Goose Car Rental at 520-261-0439. Again, 520-261-0439. Computer Doctor of Tucson is the best choice in desktop support in Tucson. They fix error messages, power and boot problems, install of software and hardware, and much more. You can come to them or they can come to you or even have a remote support session so they can fix your issues over the phone quickly. Give them a call at 261-5508, 261-5508. Visit them on the web at computerdoctortucson.com. Computer Doctor of Tucson, because technology is great when it works. Welcome back to the Computer Doctor Show. A big high five to NASA and the new rover landing on planet Mars yesterday and witnessed by two million live w viewers on YouTube. The new Mars rover is called Perseverance. It's also the first time Linux is being used on the red planet. Back to our uh, discussion here about cryptocurrency. We have our guests Robin Hill and Tanner Payne on the phones with us. So we did actually have a... Uh, a a question from uh, someone here in the studio is cryptocurrency actually used to make online purchases or is it just uh, or people just using it as investment as it goes up and down have you have you uh, got, actually used it for purchasing anything personally I would stay away from buying anything with it right now because if you're looking at the boom that's even happened this week the week started off roughly around 47 thousand and it's already been an increase of about ten thousand dollars in one week alone so i mean i would mm -hmm. hold out we're talking about a hundred thousand possibly a hundred thousand dollars in one in worth of one bitcoin by the end of the year is what most people are projecting so you're looking at instead of spending your money you could have it doubled by the end of the year if you buy in now so right mm -hmm. So would, so if you like so that. if you have money but you have money uh, tied up in cryptocurrency bitcoin or what have you um and you wanted to spend it would it be better to uh to cash it out and then spend it as cash or yes it, that would be the better way I think it would be uh, if you're going to do that um, I I mean it depends because there's so many ways you can do it now there's you can actually buy get debit sign up for debit cards that have bitcoin wallets that, mm -hmm. you, that work just like banks. You can get interest on the Bitcoin that's in the account, and then from there you can use the debit card and use it just like regular money. Mm -hmm. But then you also can just buy using Bitcoin using the current trade value. Mm -hmm. right. so. so since you brought up the, uh, the subject of uh, credit cards, uh, MasterCard has been uh, uh, very interested in crypto. Uh, lots of financial institutions are creating okay. crypto futures uh, for their customers because customers are starting to ask about it. But uh, here is a, it's more of a security question. So if I have a credit card now and I recognize a transaction that I don't uh, recognize, there's a, something comes up on my account that I don't recognize, I can just call my uh, credit card company and uh, they can uh, uh, rectify the situation. So... Has there uh, have you heard of any instances where someone's crypto has been stolen? Personally, I have not, um, because the passphrase and there's two different keys to get into your wallet. There's a public key that anyone can send you crypto to your wallet through that public key, but then there's a really long digit private key that only you would know about, and that's what you use to access your wallet. So. Unless somehow you got your private key hacked, which doesn't happen 
very often. I can't say it doesn't happen at all because it probably has. I just haven't heard about it. Mm. That it's it's pretty secure. And the thing with crypto and credit cards and stuff like that, a lot of a lot of places aren't going specifically towards using crypto specifically to buy things. They're using crypto backed loans or crypto backed credit cards. So if you want a credit card for like a thirty thousand dollar limit, mm. they're asking you to put down a collateral with a Bitcoin. Mm, so that's that's, smart. that's where you're getting a lot of security from there because you're not going to lose that Bitcoin as long as you're paying your credit card off. Interesting. Right. And so you have like a third, they're getting like backing for security from another company yeah. pretty much. And that's funny you say that because, you know, if I, if I lost my MasterCard code or whatever, I can just call up the company and I can get my code back. So it makes me think about that one guy who couldn't remember his login code and he has like $2 million on his uh, Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. It's like, how come, you know, how come you can't just get a hold of whoever and get your login code and show that you are who you say you are? So that right there threw a red flag to me that they don't have any, like, they don't have any security to, like, secure you. But that, he could have did that way before it was a big deal, you know, so who knows? But, <laughs> but I, I know this, that, uh, for, for example, if somebody forgets their bank code or they forget some sort of, uh, you know, Internet uh, a security code like their email, the worst that's going to mm -hmm. happen is they lose some some files. They lose some files on their computer. They lose their pictures. They may lose their email uh, from cloud right. storage or something. But if you lose these passphrases or somebody somebody is able to uh, get a hold of um, anything that is yours that comes in, um, that they're able actually have access to this uh, to this cryptocurrency on whatever device that you're using, um, is. Once the money is gone, it's like gone. It's like digital cash, right? It's the same. Mm -hmm. It's the same concept of uh, somebody uh, uh, going into your pocket and pulling out a wad of cash and running. You know, there, right. there's almost no recourse. Actually, I'm going to be doing a. I'm going to be doing a podcast on going more in depth on this because it's a lot. Hard, it's harder to talk about something as big as this mm -hmm. within a seven minute segment. But right, right. The, the thing with when, when you're transferring Bitcoin, a lot of these exchanges and stuff like that, they have certain things in place, certain security measures in place that stop you from just being able to automatically transfer. So something right. like Gemini, for you to be able to transfer to another Bitcoin wallet address, you have to have that address linked to your account for a week or more. And it sends, you, sends, your e sends to your email that's connected with your exchange account it sends it to you multiple times, a notification that says this wallet ID was tried to add to your um, approved address, is mm -hmm. what they call it, multiple times. So if you miss that address email a bunch, then that's bad, but you should be able to pick up at least one time where that address email is sent to you and then stop that approved address from being allocated right that, so, that's good right. to have that delay so it's the same it's yeah. the same difference of like a uh, like a time release safe like if you go to a convenience yeah. store sometimes they have a sign that there's like a time release uh, uh, safe that uh, even if you punch the code in the safe doesn't open for like another five minutes or ten minutes or 20 minutes enough time yeah. for the cops to get there if necessary if they're being held up that delay right. That that twenty minute delay will stop the because they just want to take the money and run, but uh, this one week delay of of uh, of expounding of uh, sharing like wallets, you know, that would mm -hmm. uh, that would that would prevent things like that from happening. So that's actually very very smart technology. I I, I currently I I want to encourage uh, all our listeners to, uh, to 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 look at this technology and see if it's. Uh, the right thing uh, for you. Uh, real quick before we wrap up, uh, can we can both of you uh, tell uh, everybody uh, how they can maybe listen to your podcast and some of the things that you're doing locally in your towns? Uh, Tanner. Oh. Um, so I'm going to be launching another podcast here soon called uh, World According to Pain. It's going to be uh, actually it's going to be called Mm -hmm. It's going to be called the World Recording Pain. And okay. um, we're going to talk about, like, cryptocurrency. We're going to be talking about different social things that are happening in the world. And 
it's just going to, you can find it on pretty much any platform. Okay. And then on on social networks, you can connect with me at Pain to Success. Okay, uh, good. Pretty much anywhere. And you can I like, I like that name, too. That's a pretty clever name. You play off your name with it. Pretty Robin, good. Robin, we're running out of time. Tell us real quick about you. you got 20 seconds. Uh, yeah, I'm Robin Hill on most uh, social medias, or um, OG Runaway uh, is my producer name. But um, I pretty much just, I just motivational talk. I, I have a, I'm on a live stream on the site called You Now, um, and Facebook at any time I can get. And that's pretty much about it. All right. Thanks, you guys. Aaron Moss, your host and technology expert, Tom Fairbanks at the Control Board. We'll listen to you next week, everybody. Have a good one. Hey, you too. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Computer Doctor Show. If you missed any part of this live broadcast, we post all our episodes online at ComputerDoctorShow.com. Remember, the world is getting more and more tech, and so should you. To stay current with technology, listen to the Computer Doctor Show each week for local and global tech insights. If you have suggestions for a topic on a future show, send us an email at info at ComputerDoctorShow.com. 